Hello everyone and welcome to the part seven of the making a programming language series. I think it's part seven. Let's look here. Uh, yeah, it's part seven. The previous part was part six. I'll put that previous part in the description. So today we're going to look at defining our own functions. So um, as of now, we only have one built in function in our language in our hello language called uh, print, which is print something. So let's create another file here. I will call it uh, functions.hello or something. I don't know. And now we can decide how our syntax for defining a function should be. And I think we're going to keep this language simple and we're going to keep it uh, pretty similar, similar to JavaScript. Uh, I think that's the theme we have went for before. Yeah, var name. Yeah. So let's just try and keep things simple. So we're going to do function uh, do something. And let's just print something inside of there. And then we're going to call do something. Okay. So what happens if we run this program now? Hello. Um, sorry. Hello examples functions. Undefined variable function. So currently our interpreter thinks that this is a variable and it sets this it thinks that it's undefined. So we have to tell the interpreter what to do with this function keyword here. So to do that, first we need to parse that function keyword. So we're going to go into the parser and I'm going to move my camera a little bit. And let's see here, where is appropriate to catch this keyword? So we have our parse statement here which is going to parse an identifier if we if it encounters a token id now this token here is actually an id it's an identifier so we're actually going to go into parse id here so we will end up oh i didn't have c tags we will end up in parse id here and it's going to compare if the current value is var, then it's going to parse a variable definition. Otherwise, it's going to parse a variable. So we're actually going into this one and it's going to try and parse a variable. But that's not what we want to do. So we're going to add another else here. So an else if string compare parser current token value is equal to function, then we're going to instead parse a parser parse function definition parser. So that's basically what we're going to do there. Uh, now we haven't defined this function yet, unfortunately, so we have to do that. So let's just put it here underneath parse variable definition. So ASTT parser parse variable definition parser t parser. Okay. No, sorry, parse function definition. Okay. Uh, let's go into the parser here and we're going to define this here as well. Uh, let's put it, let's put it here. Oops, didn't copy it correctly. Let's put it there. So what are we going to do here? Well, let's just first print something here and see that we actually end up here. Uh, parse function. Let's just return zero for now. Okay. We're going to compile, 
run our program again and we're encountering parse function and then we're getting a seg fault which is sort of expected because we, we're not doing anything uh, in here right now okay so the first thing we want to consume is the function keyword so we want to consume uh, this keyword here basically which is an identifier okay so we're going to do parser eat parser token uh, ID function keyword and then we're going to do a uh, char function name is equal to parser current token value so this will be the name of our function I'm just gonna have a sip of coffee Okay, then we are going to parse that name basically. So uh, parser, or we're gonna consume the name, parser, sir, eat, parser, token ID, because this is also a name or a to an ID. So right now we're consuming this one here. Okay. And then we're going to consume a left parenthesis and a right parenthesis. Parser eat, parser, token L paren, parser eat, par, parser, token R paren. Okay. And what comes next? Well, we have a left brace and the right brace. So, uh, parser e, parser token. Uh, I wonder if we would have braces. We might have to add it to the lexer. Let's see here. Mm, I'm gonna go full screen here for a bit. Um, no, we don't have left brace and right brace. So we need to add it. So let's go into the token.h and we're gonna add them here. Uh, token r brace token l brace so we're adding those types to the token enum here token type enum then we're going to go into the parser again and or the lexer i mean and now we have to actually parse these uh, uh, braces here so i'm just going to copy this one and we're going to change this to a right brace and we're going to say token right brace. I'm going to copy that one. And we're going to have a left brace. And we're going to initialize a token with the left brace type. OK. So now we can use them here. So in our parse function definition again, we're going to do parser eat parser token or our uh, left brace. And we're going to eat a right brace. Right. So what we have parsed now is basically um, we parse this one, we parse this one, we parse those two, and we parse these two. But we have something in between here, right? So the function definition also has a body. So how will we parse that? Well, first we can look at um, we have something here called parse statements, which returns a compound and we can actually use this as a body. So, uh, between the left brace and the right brace here, we can do, um, ASTT compound is equal to parser parse, uh, state statements parser okay so we parse the body as well now we also need to add an AST type for our function definition we haven't done that yet so we have AST variable definition and we should also ha have a have a uh, AST uh, function 
definition. Okay, so now we can actually create an AST node at the start of our parse function definition here called ASTT um, function def maybe is equal to init AST AST function definition. Now our function definition uh, to, uh, AST type here also needs some other members. Uh, it needs a body. Right now, the function definition don't take in any arguments. Um, so now we're only going to do the body. Okay, so we're going to do AST function definition. And we're going to add another member here. So we'll call it we're going to call it struct AST struct uh, function definition body. And we will attach the compound here that we parsed basically. Okay, so this function definition body here is going to be whatever is in between here. Okay, now what we want to do is go into the ast.c and we want to make sure that that this one is uh, is a void pointer when we initialize it. So we're going to do uh, AST function definition body is equal to void zero. And this is the same as saying null, basically. Okay. Now in our parser, we can do, instead of doing ASTT compound here, we can just do uh, function def function definition body is equal to uh, maybe we should just call this AST and makes things a bit simpler so AST okay so now we can actually return this AST so what are we doing here well first we're creating a new AST node here with the type of AST function definition we're eating the function token which is this token here. Uh, and then we're eating the name of the function here. We're consuming that one. We're consuming the parentheses, the left brace. We're uh, parsing the body, attaching that to this newly created AST node here. And then we're consuming the right brace. And then we're returning the function definition. Okay. So let's see if this compiles. Let's do, um, let's do a full recompilation. So I'm going to do make clean, make. And as we can see, it compiled. So now if we run our program here again, I'm doing hello.out examples function definitions dot hello. Uh, we seem to be uh, ending up in an infinite loop for some reason. So I figured out why we ended up in an infinite loop. And the reason is that we don't currently support underscore for function names. Uh, for uh, now, we're just going to ignore that. So we're just going to call it do something like that. Okay. And now if we compile again, and we run our program, um, we're getting an unexpected token uh, left brace for some reason. And why is that? So I found why we were getting an unexpected token here. Uh, in our lexer, where we fetch the uh, left brace here, I actually named it right brace. It should be called left brace. So I made an oopsie here. Uh, so there we go, it's fixed. So we just uh, shifted those. And now if we go back and we compile and we run it, uh, we're getting an uncaught statement of type one. This is because our visitor doesn't know what to do with the function definition. 
So we successfully parse the function definition, but our visitor doesn't know what to do with it. So what we can do is to go into the visitor.c and we can do uh, in our switch statement here in the visitor visit function, we're going to do uh, case AST function definition return visitor visit uh, function definition visitor node rec. So our problem here was basically that we didn't have a case for a function definition. Now our second problem here is that we don't have this function defined yet. So we need to go into visitor.h and we're going to create a function here called ASTT is going to return an AST node and it's going to be called visitor visit function definition visitor t visitor ASTT uh, node. We're going to copy that. We're going to go into visitor.c and we're going to define this function here. to just print something here to see what happens. Uh, we found the function definition return node. Compile, run it again, and there we go. The function definition is parsed. So we have uh, successfully parsed the function definition and we have successfully visited the function definition. So let's go through what we did here. We wrote a simple program here where we declared a uh, or defined a function called do something and we're just printing something in there and then we're calling do something. And then we go went into the lexer. We added some new tokens, the left brace and the right brace. We also added these uh, token types to the token structure, right brace and left brace. And then we wrote a function in the parser to parse a function definition. So this knows what to do with uh, the function definition and how to parse it. And that function is being called, the parse function definition is being called when it encounters this function keyword, basically. So in our, uh, uh, so what's going on here is that the if you go into our main.c here, you can see that we are calling uh, parser parse and the parser parse function. It calls the parse parser parse statements function and the parser parse statements function. It is calling parser parse ID when it encounters a token ID. And in our case, uh, this is a ID. It's an identifier. So it's going to go into the parse ID and then it's going to encounter this function keyword and it's going to call the parse function definition, which is going to return the function definition node. And then we're calling the visitor on this, uh, the root node that the parser gave us. And eventually the visitor is going to call the visitor visit function definition. So, and we can see that that works now. Now, obviously, we're not really getting the expected behavior here, right? Because we expected this to print something. Now, it will be a too long video to implement that in this video. So we're going to do that in next video. So in the next video, we're going to implement calling our own functions because we can't call our function here yet. So uh, I'm looking forward to making that video. And if you're not already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button if you don't want to miss any of my uploads. And I hope we learned something here today and I'll see you in the next video.